Day 5. Let's try and make the CCP do stuff. But first, let's fix a bug. So, during the off time, I put in the jump table for all the VDOS entry points because that's just boring cut and pasting and not particularly interesting. And an interesting thing, well, the only interesting thing about it, the table is uninteresting. The consequences of the table are interesting. Anyway, when I run it, it crashes. Uh, it has printed a couple of numbers and stopped, as you can see. That's not an error. It's just got confused and died. And the reason for that is dead simple. So our CCP does nothing other than exit. What does the exit entry point do? Well, it's here and it loads the CCP. So why hasn't it reloaded it correctly? Well, the answer is because the, the FCB we're using to refer to the CCP has its various fields set up from reading the last CCP. So open file does work. It opens the file. We then try to read a sector from it, but it's already at the end of the file. So it terminates immediately. We patch it, we relocate it again. This mangles all the fix ups in the CCP and then when we try to run it, it does a hyperspace jump into nowhere. So we need to be resetting the relevant fields in the CCP, which honestly, I think that the open call should be doing this. I think it should reset, well, we have to reset the extent, the current record, uh, and uh, S2. But it doesn't, so there you go. Uh, CCP, FCB, comma, hang on a second. CCP FCB is a 16-bit value, so there's no point doing any of our indexing. We can just do, whoops, do that again, but pressing the right keys this time. We just do LE0 plus FCB extent byte S2 byte it's S2, the module number. Uh, should be a document here on the disk formats. This one contains the description of what the various fields in the FCV do. Here we go. S2 is the one we want. Yep. And current record. Okay. So now when we run it, it should not do that. Extend counter, extend counter. It's also going to mangle the drive number. Oops, that should be a one. Okay, I am confused now. So let's use the debugger. So we are going to 1904, continue, run. Okay, reset the disk system. We're here. Clear the relevant bytes in the FCB. load the address of the FCB into 1E1C. So when we dump that, we can see drive one, file name, everything else is zeros. 
um, and we're now about to open the file so let's stash another breakpoint there and continue and it crashes immediately so it's trying to print an error intriguing okay open the file carry is clear that means the file is correctly opened yeah I can't step over that BCC I'll do that again and we get already open. Uh, actually, I will do something about that right now. So the reason why the file is already open is because it's referring to the CPMFS file that we've opened here. A soft reset hitting break does not close all files, which doesn't make any sense, but that's MOS for you. It's a decent 8-bit operating system, but it does have holes in it. And this is one of them. Uh, so all we have to do is call the system call to close all open files. Go MOS API, it's OzFind for doing this. There we go. Close the file specified by the handle. Uh, if function is zero, handle is in Y and X is ignored. So like so. So now we hit break, we hit shift break and it actually runs. We haven't done a hard reset. On the BBC Micro, you do a hard reset with control break, and that resets a whole bunch more stuff. So, open the file. That's here. Carry clear. Uh, get the TPA address into user DMA which is 001F our BDOS is bigger now so we've it's claimed another page start reading the file so if you now look at 1F00 we see the wrong file. I know what's gone wrong. Uh, some of this stuff I did offline was in the BIOS here. I wrote this huge terrifying macro to, Alec to uh, compute the DPH and DPD. So you give it the disk parameters, so 40 by 32 sectors, 2K blocks, 64 directory entries, no reserved sectors. And I bet that this is, yep, uh, this is configured for a block size of 24. This is CPM tools definition of the disk. And I'm using this to create the file system and it's using a block size of 1024 so we just go up here and change this back to 1024 which I must have left in for debugging and now it should work okay and it should now be spinning loading the CCP over and over again so let's actually make the CCP do something So here is our system call table. 
twice low byte and high byte, same as we did for the BDOS. And we're going to put in console, well, one console routine con in, no, con out. So entry con out. So what this does is oops, I just want to check to make sure that I put BIOS con out. That's in lowercase. That should be in uppercase. And BIOS set TPA should likewise be get TPA. Okay. So all this will do is on entry. Uh, So we should theoretically just be able to do jump BIOS con out or even just put BIOS con out directly here. But uh, I don't think we can because console output send the character to the screen, tabs are expanded to spaces. I think it may also turn carriage returns to new lines. Uh, so con out ends up actually being quite big. Write the character. What's this doing? You can also, it also uh, it does XOR, XOFF, uh, pausing. Not sure. Yeah, this is. Wait a minute. This is the. That's not the user typing on the keyboard. That's the the character being sent from the program to the console. So I'm not sure how that's actually supposed to work. Comp call is true if we are computing the column position, because we have to keep track of that to expand tabs. Okay, well, let's let's define a byte to put the column position in. Uh, it will also potentially copy to the printer, but we have no printer in CPM sixty five. So this is the column stuff. It also handles backspaces. Write the character. Send the character in E to the screen. 
Tabs expand to spaces. Up can be paused with Control S and restarted with Control Q. That sounds like it's the user typing on the keyboard. Uh, I'm going to find the original documentation. So here's the original CPM2 interface guide. Yes, Control S and Control Q are typed on the keyboard. And this is checking for starting and stopping the scrolling. The thing is that there is no way for the BDOS to buffer incoming text. So I would expect that on receipt of a control S on the on the keyboard, then we would end up blocking in the console input routine rather than console output. So what does Conbrook do? Here we go. Check for character ready. Okay, so this actually seems to be doing the blocking in con out rather than con in. Which is weird. Anyway. So the input character is an A. Uh, So uh, on the 6502, you can use the bit instruction to test flags. So we're going to say uh, bit output paused. What that will do is it will read the value, set the N and V flags based on the value, it then sets the zero flag to that value ended with the accumulator, but we don't care about that. And we're going to be using the top bit so that when we're paused, it'll be negative. So now we want to Uh, compute the column position. So if A is a backspace which is ASCII 8 or ASCII 127 We want to decrement column position if it is negative zero it 
and print. If it is a tab, Wait a minute. Comp call is true if we are computing the column position. Why would we not be computing the column position? This is the code that prints the character. Yeah, why would comp call be false? This is the buffered read routine. I was expecting these routines to be dead simple, actually, but they really aren't. True if computing column position. So the only place it seems to be being set is in the read routine. So this is the buffered read routine. It reads a line from the keyboard with simple line editing really simple line editing. So we have carriage return, line feed, backspace. Uh, this is all the backspace code. Comp call greater than zero marks repeat as length compute, whatever that means. Yes, I don't know what that does. So let's ignore it for now. I think it has to do with being able to set this to zero uh, and then you can write lots of stuff with con out and it will compute the column that it will have been at. But I don't know why. Anyway. Uh, so this is actually going to print the character first. Are we going to... Are we relying on the terminal to do tab expansion? Well, here are the comparison routines in this, and there's backspace, space. Uh, it's doing that to check for control characters, and backspace again, a different backspace. No column change if nulls. These, co these comments are not terribly helpful. Okay, well... So we print the character, and now we compute the 
uh, column position, which we're going to do the easy way. It's actually cheaper to do it like this than it is to um, um, and I just want to check to see, uh, I think decrement absolute, yep, yeah, all the decrements set to the negative and zero bits, so we can do if negative LDA zero SDA column position, reset column position to zero and exit. So branch if equal to backspace, branch if equal to backspace. Is it a tab? If yes, then we want to advance to the next eight character boundary. Um, so we carry add one. Okay, uh, and if it's a control code, that is smaller than space, then I think as a simplifying assumption, I think it's a simplifying assumption uh, for all control codes, which includes new lines. We are just going to zero the column position. So what should this be? So if the, so we are subtracting position minus 32. So if char minus 32. So if the character is 31, we will get a, a result of minus one carry will be set. If char is 32, then we will get as a result of zero. And as we discovered last time, the carry will be set. So we're going to set that to 31, one less. And do branch if carry set to zero column. In all other cases, we are going to increment the column position and exit. And there is actually one other thing we want to do, which is up here somewhere. Well, I can't find it, but it's something we have to do, which is to mask off the top bit because CPM is not 8-bit safe. Although, given that we're not actually going to be running any real CPM code, let's make it 8-bit safe.
All right. Um, and I actually, I think I can do slightly better than this. If we load the column position into X, then this means that because this is three bytes, uh, so you want to increase the column position, inks, and it with not seven. and store and exit. Uh, here we just want to increase the column position, store and exit. Uh, in fact, we're going to want to do a lot of storing and exiting. So decrease the column position is dex, zero column is a simple ldx zero. Uh, and here we actually want to store x and exit, which means that we can't actually put a jump exit in there. We do want to store a. Uh, we could put it back into x and jump down here, but that's four bytes, which is what this costs. So it's all the same. Okay, so basically it will do a cheap and easy uh, count of wh what column we're at, assuming that the terminal is going to expand tabs, which I think it does on the BBC Micro. Um, and whenever there's a control code, normally the user has done a return then it'll reset the column position to zero. And here we are going to uh, check to see if the user has restarted output. So to do that, we are going to push the character, let's uh, stash the character that the user is trying to, let's do that here actually. We want to read a character that the user has typed. And this is this is calling console status. Return if no char ready. Check for character ready. Oh, I see what it's doing. I see what it's doing. It's checking the status on the output so that if the user is typing while text is going out, it will process the key. I did not know it did that. Huh. Okay. So, stash the character being read. Um, check to see if there is a character ready. Uh, and our BIOS is, where is const? Returning zero or non uh, zero for no an ordinary boolean value. So I lost con 
in uh, check for stop screen function that's control s found control s yeah so we're going to compare with uh, control s is x off which is not on this list L M N O P Q R S nineteen. Um, If the user's type to control C, then we immediately reboot the system. That is, restart the BDOS and the CCP, thus exiting the current program. So if you if we are pausing If we are pausing, then we just block for another key, discard it, and then continue on. So we don't need that anymore. Right. Two, nine, four. Minus eight, why? Okay. Uh, zero column is defined inside a scope, so we can't actually do that. Okay, so we need to do branch if positive to exit. Pause is undefined. BQ. Right, now we want BIOS con in and const. And we're putting our BIOS calls down here. Con in, con out, con status. Uh, this is too far. We can't. We can't jump this far. I could probably do it if I put the console stuff above the jump table. So let's just do that. Six oh two short branches have a eight bit displacement.
no this is just too big okay well let's put that back where it was and this has to turn into uh, if equal jump to exit okay so this should run but nothing will actually happen because we're not doing anything in it here so let's just do a uh, as if on here lda q dy bdos uh, console output JSR BDOS end loop right and let's see what it does okay we successfully print a queue and then we stop and I know why we stop that halt message was coming from here because we aren't returning from the from after our system call so we could just put a RTS in and then it should work there we go our CCP is now printing lots of queues and because of the magic of MOS I can switch to a high-res screen mode uh, and everything should still work and you can see the speed at which it's actually doing the things which isn't brilliant so there's quite a lot of overhead but anyway that's the way it is okay so we now have our console working oh yes there was actually one other thing I wanted to try okay it's running control C said control C nope control S nope am I using the right control key yes I believe I am okay in key is wrong uh, in key is the system call we're using to actually do the console status stuff just wondering how to step this actually one thing I can do is do that okay that is actually typing the word key so we know we've reached this point So we read the key and then we test it. Um, I bet conin is not working right. So conin, if there is no pending key called read char, Oh, this is this code is broken. Well, that should be a jump for a start. So, if there is no key pending, call uh, Osraj, and then exit immediately. That's why that's a jump. Otherwise, return the pending key. We've read the pending key into A, so we clear the flag here and exit. So here,
if there is a pending key then say yes otherwise check to see if there are any keys pending from the operating system by trying to read one with the timeout if there are none then no otherwise store the key and exit yeah let's try that unexpected end if and prop. Okay, not a control S. Uh, that's still not working. Control C. Yes, I can't actually tell if that's doing anything. I don't think it is. I think it's just printing the word key and stopping. So we're going to have to debug this. And we are loading at 400. Do you want to debug the BIOS? We continue. OK, it's loaded. That is the table we're looking at here. This garbage is ASCII text. And here is where we're going for a one. Continue. OK. So let's press a key and hopefully const will have done its work and we should get a break. We got a break. So read the key. And it was eight one. That's not a valid key. Osbyte Osbyte eight one returns the key in X. I bet Osbyte index. Read key with time limits on exit. X is the character. So that should be SDX pending key. But anyway, it thinks there's a key pending. So we skip the call to Rudge and we try to return the key. Yeah. And return. Now we're back in the BDOS. And of course, that key is not any of the values here because it's garbage. So it's not a, a return. Uh, so it's not a control S. It's not a through. It's not a control C. So we just continue on. Okay, let's try that again. Control S. No, still not working. Control C. No. So we are trying to get to four A one. So let's type a control S. Okay. Is there a key pending? Yes, there is. And it's 8 1 again. On exit, X is the character. Did I remember to save this? I 
Okay, control S. Right. Right, okay, yeah, I forgot to save it. That was what the problem was. So we now have a control S character in A. So we reset, yeah, yeah, it is a uh, it is a control S. So now we pause waiting for a key. I press the key. Oh, it's still broken. Press the key. I said. Press the key. Um. Okay, so this is the second time we're in, we've gone through con in. So this should now be blocked waiting for the user to type something. So we look for the key press, the key press is zero, there is no pending key. And of course, Osruj, I bet, returns It's key in A. I thought I was going to return it in X again. Okay, control S. Continue once. Okay. So this is the operating system doing its thing. Six. It's checking all its various bits. We don't want that one. Yeah, I think that is now blocked waiting for a key press. I'm going to change this to this because this will allow me to step over this first time, second time, step over, press key. Ooh. The operating system is not picking up. So why is it doing that? Our operating system call is not returning. And I don't know why. FFE0 is the right address, yeah. Intriguing. Well, I did make it work, so I can do Control S and it stops typing, and I can do any other key and it continues typing, and I can do Control C and it reboots. But you can't actually see anything happening when it reboots, except if you go up here into the memory view, this noise here is the BIOS and the BDOS being loaded. Uh, what I did was I changed the call to Ozruj 
to a call to Osbyte 8.1, the same one that we're using to test for a key press. I just gave it a high timeout. And this works, and I don't know why this works and Osrudge doesn't. But, eh. Anyway. So we should now have a console more or less working. We've got con out. We don't have con in, but let's just skip ahead slightly and do this one. And this is a useful routine. Oh yeah, uh, I also want to move these down into our transient state table because we want it all to be zero initialized when the VDOS restarts. So what this does is it writes the parameter. So the first thing we need to do is get the parameter into a pointer. And this brings up another point. All our entry points so far, well, except for con out and exit, well, okay, some of our entry points, open file and read sequential, they take a 16-bit parameter, which is a pointer to the FCB. Now, all the BDOS entry points take 16-bit parameters. So rather than stick the code to copy this into a pointer, because they're nearly all po always pointers, in the entry point itself, we are going to do it here. So our FCB uh, pra um, variable, this is just going to be a general purpose parameter variable. We didn't want to do that. Uh, just trying to remember what the vim end of word uh, escape is. Angle brackets. So fcb becomes param. Okay. And we didn't want to change these. Or that. We did want to change that. I'll just line up the spaces. Or that. I'll fix the rest of the alignment later. Can't be bothered to do it now. Wow, I did use that FCB namespace a lot. Okay. Uh, so, we're using these uh, old user FCB and new user FCB routines to actually store the parameter. So we are not. In fact, this, that routine goes away completely and this becomes a fall through. sequential okay we want to leave it our oh, old user FCB has gone away so this becomes select FCB uh, drive we're actually going to turn this to into 
select fcb drive convert user fcb okay so this actually wants to store uh, the ccp fcb value in param so that will be low byte sdb param plus zero high byte param plus one uh, and now we can use indexing cheaply here. Uh, actually, is it cheap? If we use indexing, it would be two bytes to load Y, two bytes to do the store, and these are three bytes, so it's not actually cheaper. So let's just jump this down here open file okay and param remains set here okay so now we come down to the BIOS entry point so the first thing we want to do is to stash the parameter which got passed in Uh, in registers. So we now no longer care about the value of A, so we don't need to push and pop around there. We just need to find our console routine uh, again. We don't need to push and pop here. So that is just going to be a load, the low byte of the parameter. Uh, reset ignores the parameter open file uses it, new uh, read sequential uses it, and I believe that's all we've got. So does this work? No, it doesn't. Um. Okay, it loads, and it reboots, and it stops. And I also remember now that there is a thing we're missing, which is if the um, if the user actually typed a control C, we want to reboot. So that can be, I'm just going to take this out of line. Put it down here, like so. Or can we be clever? I think we can. No, we still have to. I was just thinking there was a way to get rid of that jump, but there isn't. Okay. So the reason this comes up is because now on entry to write string, param is set to the appropriate parameter. So all we need to do is do a loop. Uh, is that loop? Load the value. And and I don't think we want to do that with indexing. The reason for not using indexing is indexing would limit us to two two hundred and fifty six bytes in the string. 
and I don't want to do that. So it's a handful more bytes. So we can do load param comma y. Okay. Is it a dollar sign? If yes, stop. Is it a zero? This is an extension used by our uh, dialect because in C, zero length strings are so much more common. And because we just want to check zero bit and that is set by the load, we can put that there. So then all we do is BIOS con out increment param plus zero if rolled over ink param plus one like so and now in our CCP we're going to add our first utility function which is VDOS write string Right string jump VDOS and instead of instead of just printing a queue, we are going to uh, LD A is the low byte. LDX is the high byte, JSR VDOS right string. OK, and when we run it, we get hello world. And Control S should work. Don't think it did anything. Control C should work. That does not look right, to be honest. Uh, here is our uh, CCP code. So 1F07 is where our loop goes. So break there, continue. OK, it does actually seem to be working. Yeah, uh, if you look at the memory view, because this shows zero at the top and FF at the bottom, uh, this line, the red represents write. This is the video memory. Uh, this blue means execute. Green is read. I bet this is the string. And these are the that that will be the bit of the BIOS that we're currently running from to print the message and this will be these two blue lines here this will be the BDOS entry point code and the actual um, printing loop so good that works So this gives us the ability to print things. Let's just do con in. So con in should actually be simpler. Should just be yes, read keyboard character to A. It does actually seem to be buffering one character. Oh, interesting. 
that's the character red um, elsewhere. That's this character. Uh, this is so that if you press a key that's not a control S or a control C, it gets buffered ready to read later. So we're going to have to put that in. So this is actually the same code we're using in the BIOS. Load buffered key. Uh, if it is zero, read it. Otherwise, clear it. And here. If it's not a reboot, then we actually want to store the key in buffered key. Uh, so what if you type two characters while something is being listed, then you'll lose the first one. I think that's good enough. Okay, so let's go to our CCP DOS con in console input DOS DOS con out Oops. console output jump DOS. So let us print then Ooh, that didn't work. What's this complaining about? Uh, local scope was not closed. Uh, I didn't forgot to put an end proc in better. Okay, let's try that and run. Type something. Good, good, good. Control S. Yeah, that eats... That eats several characters. Why is it eaten several characters? Oh, I know what's happening. We are printing the Control S and it's being interpreted as a BBC micro uh, escape sequence. Okay, let's try control C. Is that working? That's not working. Uh, because control C is not interpreted in con in, it's only interpreting con out. Okay, anyway, let's change it to uh, high res text mode. Manually, where's this star key gone? Manually run the thing. So if I type Control S, uh, Control A, A, and then three more A's. Yep, I I remember that from times past. Uh, VDU nineteen. Uh, the control code 19, otherwise known as control S, uh, is the the code for redefining the palette. So I turned 
logical color one, which this mode is monochrome, so that's white, into physical color one, which is red. Anyway, that was a thing. But that works. Good. So if I look at con in, it's not parsing the character. Wait a minute, there's actually a lot more to this. This is a fall through. Right, it gets the character and then it prints it. No, there's a jump. It does not print it. But it doesn't parse it either. Uh, there's two entry points. One does not print it. One does print it. Which one are we looking at here? Console output. Console input. Uh, it reads the next console character to register a graphic characters along with carriage return line feedback says are echoed yeah so con in here is actually con ec in the in the original code con in is used elsewhere there's the error root handling routine it's used by con echo and it's used by the, the buffered read routine. So this is actually going to not fall through to print the character uh, we want to hmm We want to print it, but we also want to return it in A. Or do we want to return it in A? So this entry code, on entry, we are putting the value into param 0 and 1. I think we should do the same thing on exit, so we return the input parameter. So that exiting from the actual entry point, we are then going to want to reload these and return. So the only thing we've got so far that returns anything other than the carry flag on error which is important is this. See now this will just work. and open file can return an error it should return an error code uh, I think find first is doing it This is read sequential. This is returning an error. I think we now need to put this in param plus zero and set the carry flag. 
not there. This is also, no, this is an internal, so that's fine. And I don't think we're doing this anywhere else. Yeah, okay. So we should be good. Uh, we also want to change our CCP. Uh, let's just uh, just increment A. Okay, run. So if I press an A, <laughs> that's not what I wanted. Interesting. I am pressing the same K key E the same key each time. That should be an A. So I'm guessing that these values are not being read in and out correctly. That will be a entry point thing. So we are storing the thing in AX in the parameter. And once we've done that, we are loading the thing from the parameter into AX. So con in. Aha. Uh, this wants to be a jump exit. And go press a there we go so we get the a that's echoed from the first key and the b that comes from the ccp after it returns the value so good and if i do a control c it should restart ccp of course it didn't why did it not do that because this has, I think, yes, because this has put the wrong value into X, into param zero. I don't even know why that worked, to be honest. The con in returns its value in A, so we want to put that into X. That's, that's not great code. So that's working, Control-C. Did I say this was supposed to be easy? This is just a frigging console. It should be straightforward. Transfer A to X, jump to exit. It's dx param plus zero. Jump to entry con out, which is here. Check the console status. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Ooh. Uh. Interesting. Uh, so the key being pressed by con in is put straight into the parameter. But this is not reading from that. This is reading directly from the console. And of course, there is nothing pending. So read character with echo. Call con in. Call echo c to echo the character. does this bit. So if it's a if it's a control character we know about, ignore it. 
if it's any other graphic character ignore it I'm not sure why this needs to be that ret here is wrong no it's not wrong that is just setting the carry flag on exit this isn't falling through even though it kind of looks like it is so carry set if not graphic so return if carry is set so if it's graphics then we do this character must be echoed before return so we only echo graphic characters Oof, this logic is weird so that calls tab out to do the work which expands tabs uh, But conout does not expand tabs. Does control out expand? Does conout call control out? No. Does tab out call conout? Yes. So if the user calls console out, tabs are not expanded. But it says here that tabs are expanded. So again, is it relying on the terminal to expand the tabs? I'm very confused at the semantics of the logic here. And also, console input graphic characters are echoed, tab characters are expanded, check is made for start, stop, and start, stop printer. Okay, this is weird. I don't quite follow the logic of what's going on. So let's simplify for now. So we read a key. Uh, I do think I want to check for control C. in the input path that's the hmm no, actually, I don't think I will. Uh, so let's just simplify con in so it actually makes sense. Yeah, I think that will do. Uh, honestly, let's just. Uh, if we compare x with minus 1, and if Harry is set. It's a graphic character. So carry clear, meaning it's not a graphic character. So print it, otherwise just exit. So we only echo non-graphic characters. So control C won't work, but I actually, I think that's not gonna be a problem. So if I do control G, 
Uh, that beeps. Why is that beeping? It shouldn't be beeping. So we read the key, put it in X, go down here, Uh, I'm going to have to step through this. This is ridiculous. I'm getting myself incredibly muddled. Here is our jump table, therefore we want the first thing after it, which will be here at 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, 1, A, 2, F, which is there, break, 1, A, 2, F, continue. Okay, it wants us to type something. Step, con in, we're blocked. Type a control G. Okay. So A contains seven. That's the what well, that's the, the beep character, control G. So step, we put it in X. Jump to here. We're putting it in the parameter. Is it less than one F? I have the sense of this. Wrong, that's why. Okay, control G. Good. It didn't beep, but it did move the cursor back left. That's because uh, this is receiving a seven, not echoing it, returning it to the CCP. The CCP is adding one to seven to get an eight, which is the backspace character, and calling con out. Good, that is what we want. Right. Next one. This one's going to be moderately exciting. We're doing read line. This is the, the line editor. There's finger quotes around editor there. Uh, this is the thing that reads a line of text from the keyboard with the ability to uh, do basic editing. So read a line from the keyboard. Uh, buffer is at param size at param plus zero. So go to the CCP. We want a buffer. Uh, and it's going to start with the size of the buffer, which is going to be 128 for us. and then we're going to reserve some bytes for it. Here, we here we set the size, let me just check to see whether this is, whether the size byte includes uh, the maximum number of characters the buffer will hold. So I think that does not include the size byte itself. So this is going to need to be a 127. Store it in buffer. X buffer.
Okay. So on entry, we already have the buffer set up with the length in param plus zero. So this is the description of the various control codes. Certain functions which return the carriage to the leftmost position do so only to the column position where the prompt ended. So this is one of the reasons we need the column position. Starting column position is a byte, so LDA column position, SDA start column position, and this is basically a big loop. Uh, we want to start with length and we're going to store that at temp plus zero actually we can do So essentially what this will be is reading a character then we type then we echo the character So it's using con in ah yes that's why we that's why this is using this rather than the bios because we want to honor the existing buffered key okay well So read a key without echo. Uh, is it a graphic character? And we know from up here that we want character set. So if we are already at the last position in the buffer, or uh, then do nothing. So 
if it's not equal to that, then we want to uh, let's put that y. We want to write that to the buffer and increment the buffer position and echo which we are going to do using the BIOS like so Not done Z continue. Yeah, I don't like using a jump there, but that will at least work. Uh, in fact, we can just fall through there. Okay, so let's see what this does. Type something. Good. Uh, let's actually just change the CCP to make that buffer a lot smaller. And see if that reaches the end of the buffer. <laughs> no, it doesn't. go. So uh, our buffer is 8 bytes wide. Um, our pointer starts at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we can actually enter that last one. Console input is terminated. Oh, when either the input buffer overflows. When either the input buffer overflows. There should be an OR, presumably when someone presses return. So... Uh, MX is the number of characters which the buffer can hold. So our buffer is ostensibly 8 wide, so that's 0 to 7. So MX should be 7. So we should be able to store one extra character. So this should not be a not equals. This should be a carry clear, carry set. It must be carry clear, but I think we're doing this comparison the wrong way around. Yeah, um, we actually want to compare with one plus. The easiest thing to do is to swap max and pause, but of course that won't put the value in y that we need for here. Oh well. There we go, seven characters. Uh, 
terminate with either a new line or a return. So, so on exit, we want to store the buffer length in the parameter buffer and exit. Uh, th other things which are which we can do are Control H for backspace, but we are also going to support 127 because otherwise life gets so annoying. So this will be. thinking how can I do an or here in a reasonably sane way uh, the scoping is not making my life easier I have to say I mean these structured macros are making my life a lot easier but trying to jump into one is tricky So if if the buffer position is not 1 the buffer position is set to the uh the next character that we're going to write. So yes, if the buffer position is not 1, then mx is the maximum number of characters in the buffer, nc is the number of characters read, so that's actually going to be 1 less than the buffer position. Uh, we want to make uh, we want to have y be the buffer position because we want to index into param and we want to skip that first byte. So if it's not one, then we are clear to delete one character. So that will be deck buffer pause. Uh, print the uh, the delete character which will move left one and erase and loop otherwise do nothing Uh, it's not what I wanted.
Right. Uh, that, I believe, was deleting back to the beginning of the line, but then buffer position was one, so it was skipping this and going through and it was that was a graphic character therefore it shouldn't have been printed intriguing that's better And if I press return, then we return back to the CCP and it loops. So what else can we do? Uh, reboot. If we're at the beginning of the line, boot. Otherwise, abandon the character. In fact, a Z continue turns up a jump, so it's actually much cheaper to just. Uh, load A with a value that's a graphic character and let it fall through the rest of this conditional. Well, much cheaper being two bytes. So, if I press Control C here, nothing happens. If I backspace to here and press Control C, it reboots. Good. Uh, Control R. Eighty-two minus sixty-four is eighteen. So if it's a retype, then we want to print a new line. Uh, We then want to print spaces until we reach the column position that we started at. Uh, we can do better than this. want to print the string be nice if we could just call the print string function but we can't so
So we compare with buffer max break if it is equal How have we run out of temp? No, we haven't. So the problem here is we're about to call um, BIOS con out, which will corrupt. Why? Start that with zero, increment it here, and save ourselves a little bit of pain. Ah. Type a control R. Well, that wasn't right. Debug time. And we want to break at 1F4. Start it. We didn't want to break at 1F4, but never mind. Uh, is con in this looks like I think we're here. No, we're not. Here we are. Uh, this is this piece of code here. Okay, so delete, reboot. So the next one here is retype 1B01. So print a new line, okay, load the column position, which is zero because we've just printed a new line. Wait. We printed a new line with the BIOS. We're doing all this with the BIOS. We're not updating the column position.
So in fact, the column position should be z should be set from the end of the string. Wait a second. Ah, this is using the blasted um, BIOS. We want to call here. So we are going to put our PHA and PLA back there, and we're going to put a we're going to put an internal con out here, so that here we can call internal con out, and it will type it using this code. But we don't want to do that here because we don't want these things to be interpreted. So in fact, whenever we call con out, we want to also increment column position. Or in this case, we want to decrement column position to make sure the column position is still kept current. So retype line increment column position and likewise here we want to increment the column position and the count And here we want to increment the column position. And okay, continue type. Currently, we've just used another, another page. So, Control R. Well, that's still not working, but it's now at least breaking differently. This looks like compared with twelve, that is sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Retype line, so break at one zero four. Yep. Print a new line. Now you can see the cursor has just moved down to there. Load the column position, which is six. Is that correct? Very much not correct. I don't believe that right string here has incremented the column position. Should have, but I don't think it has. Well, anyway, let's just see what it. Let's see it. Type more. Uh, I'm going to have to give up on this session soon. I'm tired and going a little bit hoarse. Okay. Bit. 
10. What's at 10? 10 is our starting column position. Is zero yet? So in fact, this should do nothing. This should break immediately, which it did not. The column position is bigger than start column position. Start column position is zero. Yes, calling new line should have reset the column position. Position is in one F eight two, which is seven. That's the, the characters I've typed. So we call new line. In fact, let's just put that right here. If we need another new line, I can... In fact, we do need another new line. But that's going to go here because it's part of the console stuff. thinking that the other place we want it is actually up here to avoid uh, no it's not it's in it's here So there we get our extra new line. I'll take out the extra one in the BIOS in a moment. So control R. Bah. Uh, where do we put the BIOS banner? Um, I managed to save a byte by reversing the string. Okay, well... So debugger on. One B O nine is where you want to be. Okay. So we're here. Read the column position, which is seven here, yeah, still wrong. Um, what's at ten? Ten is zero. Start column position is.
Yeah, I am losing it. It's late. Okay, so... New line? Yes, we're on a new line. Load for column position. Which is 9. Why is that 9? This should be this is calling internal conout which is hitting this code is this wrong I think this is wrong. So if uh, if the character is 32, then we get 0 and the carry is set. If the character is 31 minus 32, that's negative and the carry is set. Yes, this should be BTS. That is correct. Probably. Okay, so we go into the new line. We print a 13. We are here. And in fact, I don't think we want to go through this code at all not from the editor. So we test the key. Nothing is pressed, so we go to here. PLA, A is a 13. Print it. Uh, read the column position to X. X is 7. Was the character an 8? No. Was it a backspace? No. Was it a tab? No. Compare with 31. Carry is clear. Thirteen minus thirty-one is negative. So why isn't the carry set? Well, that's just going to increment the counter. Yeah, we we do not want to call con out here, and that code was wasn't working anyway. Um, Do want to call it from right string? Hmm. So when in doubt, look it up. And this does say that if uh, a is less than operand, carry is clear. So. Hmm. Anyway. Uh, And now we have problems here because that we have too much code. Um, we are actually going to need to put something else in, so... Uh, let's just bail out to a external function. This will cost us 
three bytes. Uh, four bytes rather, because we have three bytes for the call and one byte for the return here. But it does make the code easier to read, which is more important. Still doesn't work. Okay. Debugger. One B three four we want to go to. Okay. Run. Type, control R. Okay, print a carriage return using the BIOS. Clear the column position. And let's just look, see what the column position is. The column position is zero, still. Load the column position back in, compare it with the value at 10, which is 16. That was where we started. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay. Start column position is correct. Something we've done is reset column position in here. I don't know what. I'm probably calling uh, the wrong thing. Actually, we want to leave that because that's used by the startup code. Anyway, um, okay, so we should now print spaces so we print a space there we go cursor has moved on one increment the column count and continue uh, the column count is yeah, I think this is actually going to print the right number of spaces. So let's break at two, three, five, and continue. Right, so where's the cursor? The cursor is in the right place. Okay, so now we are We are going to print seven characters, I hope. But we actually want to start at one, not zero, because this is going to actually print garbage at the beginning. But it should at least print some characters, so let's give this a try. So A is 7, that's the length of our buffer. We're going to print this and it's incorrect. So we increment the column position and the count, go back to the loop, and continue. So this should be our first character. It's a 10. Why is it a 10? OA. Uh, 
2047 does not look like a valid buffer pointer. Um, I know what's happening. We are not writing. Yeah, we've done the same thing here. Uh, we have not um, we're not actually writing anything to the buffer, so the buffer is still f full of relocation bytes. Or no. If a is less, if a is greater than or equal to the parameter, so if it's greater than or equal to 32, okay, yeah, yeah, we are actually printing it here, therefore we must be advancing column position and buffer pos. But that's buffer max. We're always writing to the end of the buffer, which is presumably where this 8 down here comes from. And this should also be buffer pause, uh, buffer pause, because we want to only print up to where the cursor is. Wow, this is garbage. Okay, control R. It did it, it beeped, but it did it. Uh, that's because I didn't advance this. So we're printing the 7 at the beginning of the line. There we go. So control R retypes. Uh, it's if the terminal gets garbled. Okay, anyway. Uh, We've got one more to do, which should be fairly straightforward. Which is control U. And U is 85, 64 is 21. Yeah, really, we should just be jumping to the to the relevant code and then jumping back again to the loop. Rather than doing a call, that would save us. Uh, that would save us one byte. Because. We would still, this would be a jump that would be three bytes still. Uh, we would get rid of this three bytes, but we would gain three bytes here instead of the RTS. So nothing there. So the only thing we're doing is losing the RTS, which is one byte. So it's really not worth it. Anyway, delete line. Delete line is actually similar to retype code wise. in that we print a new line, uh, we print spaces, however, we actually want to print one fewer space, do we? Just trying to remember how CPM actually does it. Removes current line after new line. Uh, they're just thinking what happens if we're at the beginning of the 
uh, beginning of the line. It's not going to work. Sorry, let me say that more clearly. Uh, what I've seen CPM do when you do a control U is it new lines, it indents uh, one fewer character than retype did, and it types a backslash to indicate that you've cleared the line. Uh, of course, if you're at the beginning of the line, that's not going to work. Anyway, um, so column position is in A. If column position is less than starting column position, continue. So if it's if column position is greater than or equal to no no. See I'm hoping I can get my uh one different here somehow. But I don't think I can. Because I want to, I want to break if greater than or equal to, for which I need to test two bits rather than one. So actually, I might as well just, just. Might as well just do it like this. Uh, If the column position is not zero, print a backspace. Then print the backslash. And then we lose all this code. Instead, resetting buffer pause back to one where it was originally, uh, that's sort of one of those, okay, uh, run that, control U, yes, that worked. And the reason why it's type is printing a half sign here rather than anything that we would. So that's a control R. That's a control U. The reason for the half is because in the BBC Micros Mode Seven text mode, you actually get the uh, the teletext character set, which has got interesting symbols like uh, you see. Uh, arrows, half, quarter, and so on. If I go back into mode three and I run CPM, and now I do control U, now we get the backslash. In fact, I now, oh yeah, and return works, which is nice. I'm now actually unconvinced that backslash is the right character. So I'll have to check that up. But I believe the line editor works. There is actually one thing I need to do, which is I want to print the um, print the string which is more annoying than it sounds uh, let's this has to go up here Let's 
so LDA. So this should be the length of the string. maximum length of the buffer break if they're equal load the um, load the byte print it increment the count and new line So now I type something and press return. That beep means that we have done this wrong once again. And in fact, we don't want to check for equality here because we do want to print the last one. We only want to break we only want to break out if count is greater than the buffer length. So we want to Uh, we want carry set, but Z not set. So we do it. Yeah, that will do. This is just test code. I can't be bothered making it small. Okay. That wasn't right. So this should be uh, loading the value. Yeah, this should be correct. Then we increment. Let me go around again. Uh, sadly, our BDOS entry points, due to the way they work, cannot preserve registers. The MOS entry points do preserve registers. It's so much easier to work with. Are we correctly setting the value after a loop? LDA buffer pause, decrement by one, stick it in the first byte. Looks okay. okay. Break one FO four. So it should break in the BDOS, except it didn't. Presumably because we want to break at two oh oh four. There we go. We've just used another page. So uh, no, I wanted to break at two oh oh seven. That's better. Uh, 204 is the wrong address. That was where the BDOS entry point was. So low, print the banner, done. Our buffer is in 2070. So read a line. OK, so let's see what we got. Two zero seven zero, and we see there are indeed seven bytes and a seven at the beginning of the line. So 
yeah, that is doing everything just right. So print a new line. Now we start counting. Oh, interesting, there isn't a zero page form of LDY. That makes some of my code rather less efficient. And uh, there isn't, there is one for, wait, there is one for LDY. And it knows it's in zero page. Why has that not done the right thing? Odd, odd. Anyway, um, okay, you get the first byte. Why is now one? Load it. There we go. Five three. Print it. Increment count. Um. I stepped when I should have nexted. So break out to six. Continue. Okay. Yes, I have complete, completely mangled that step, but at least we can go through it again. Okay, type something. That should be four. New line. Count. That's a character. Print. Increment. Jump. Go through again for the next one. Increment. Load a character. It is. Print. Increment. Jump. Did I type X twice? I did. XXDV. Increment. Load a character. 4 4. Print. Jump. Last one. We got a four four again. That's wrong. XXDV it should be. Oh, I haven't loaded it yet, that's why. There we go. Okay, print. Jump. Load. So this comparison should fail. Carry is set. Uh, wait. Zero is not set. So what is in one nine? One nine contains a four. 2070 contains a 4. Oh, for God's sake. <sighs> okay, good. Right, that works took long enough, but that works. So... Okay, well that is kind of where I expected to get this time, though I was hoping to do a little bit of actual CCP stuff. Uh, next time we will print a prompt and start parsing the command line. 
which is annoying. Uh, it's the CCP's job to parse file names into FCBs, which is kind of grim. But this was kind of grim too, so I suppose now I'm used to it. Let's just take a quick look how big my BIOS is. Uh, my VDOS is rather 2K. Mm. Uh, there are some strings. Uh, let me just see how much relocation there is. Quite a lot of relocation, actually. We are 8, 5, 6, no, 7 minus. Uh, 1, 2, Probably here. Well, that's 63. Yeah, we have a nearly a nearly 400 bytes of relocation, so it's not quite as bad as it looks. Still quite bad. That line editor was a surprising amount of code. Um, when I'm not talking on the microphone, I might try and clean it up a little. Yeah. Okay, so that's that then. See you next time.